kiddos. Um, we are going, you guys are going to see your guest teachers in just a moment. Well, you'll see their work, not their faces. Um, I, before you do that, I actually made my own little exercise here. Um, as we are looking at lesson 22, um, because I want to serve a very specific purpose. I really, 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 really want you guys to think about, and I know you've already thought about what happens when we look for fractions of whole numbers and fractions of fractions. What happens to the numbers? So we're going to cruise through these. I made these. I separated these two lines with a line of learning. I think that's a pretty powerful line of learning. Um, so I, we're just going to do the calculations and then we're going to talk about what they mean. So let's grab a blue and let's think about two halves times six. So we have two times six up top. We have two on the bottom. This is equal to 12 over two, which is equal to six. Interesting, okay, got it, okay. We'll talk about it in a second. Let's just do our calculations. Two thirds times six or two thirds of six. We have two times six up top. We have three down below. So we have 12 up top. And then we have three down below. Our answer here is four. Interesting, okay. So now we have five fourths times six or five fourths of six. So we have, I know I'm going super quick on this. Feel free to pause if you need to, but this, a lot of this, all of this multiplication, fraction of a whole number we've been really working on. So that's why I'm cruising through it. So we have five times six up top, four on the bottom. Five times six is 30. Uh, we have 30 over 4. We can absolutely, <coughs> excuse me, simplify that. We can pull some whole numbers out of this improper fraction. Um, we know, let's think about how many whole numbers we can pull out of this fraction. We know um, that 4 times 7 is equal to 28. 28 and 30 are pretty close together, so I can pull out 7 whole numbers. Um, and then we have 2 fourths left over. Let's just double check ourselves to make sure that's correct. We can do that by switching this mixed number back into an improper fraction by doing 4 times 7, which is 28. 28 plus 2 is 30, and we keep the same denominator. So 30 over 4 is equal to 7 and 2 fourths, but this is just our simplified version. Okay, so we've cruised through some calculations up top. Now let's cruise, oops, let's cruise through some calculations down below, and then we're gonna talk about um, what those calculations mean uh, to our lives. Okay, two halves times one fourth. So we have two times one up top, and we have two times four down below. We're looking at two over eight which is equal to one fourth when we simplify it. Oh, interesting, okay. So now we have two thirds times one fourth. So that looks like two times one upstairs and three times four downstairs. We're in another room, so we're gonna do it over here. So then we have two over 12, which simplifies to one sixth because I can divide two by two and divide 12 by two 2 divided by 2 is 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, so 1 6 for that one. Now we have 5 fourths times 1 fourth. Um, so upstairs we have 5 times 1. Downstairs we have 4 times 4. Uh, 5 times 1 is 5. Thank you, Fiona. 4 times 4 is 16. We're looking at 5 sixteenths. Okay, so now we have 6 different products. <coughs> Let's look at this first column. We multiplied six by two halves. We multiplied one fourth by two halves. Two halves is just a fancy name for whole number one. You guys know that. You guys also know that when we multiply anything, any number by one, we're making one copy of it. So the result is that number. We've essentially done nothing to the number as far as changing the number. So this is not rocket science. I think the, the first column you guys have, have already figured out. The first column stays the same, okay? So when you multiply 
a number, buy one, even if it's a fancy version of one like two halves, the number remains the same. Six. We multiplied six by one, we found six as a result. We multiplied one fourth by one, fancy version of one, two halves, but our result was one fourth. Okay. So here we multiplied it, multiplied it, multiplied by one, and it stayed the same. Same. Okay. Here we multiplied six by two thirds and one fourth by two thirds. Two thirds is a fraction, it's less than one. It's a fraction that's less than one. And our product is four. We started with six, our product is four. We started with one fourth, our product is one six. Four is less than six. One fourth. I'm sorry, one six is less than one fourth. So when we multiply a number, whether it be a whole number or a fraction, when we multiply a number, whole number or fraction, by a fraction that is less than one, our resulting product is less. It gets smaller. You guys know this because we've been talking about um finding fractions of whole numbers, we're looking two thirds times six is two thirds of six, which means we're looking for a fraction of six. We're looking for a smaller portion of six. Same thing when we're looking at fractions, we're looking for two thirds of one fourth. You know the resulting fraction is going to be smaller. Even though multiplication, often we jump to the assumption that we're multiplying, we're making things bigger, that is not always the case, you guys. So do not be fooled. I know you guys will not be fooled, but don't allow anyone else to be fooled either, for goodness sakes. So here, when we multiplied our whole number and our fraction by two thirds, two thirds is less than one, our resulting products were less than. Um, they got smaller because we took a fraction of them. Cool? Okay, so then for our final column, sorry I'm making all these extra marks, I'm not intending to. Uh, final column, we multiplied six by five, Five fourths and we multiplied one fourth by five fourths. Five fourths is greater than one because five is uh, the upstairs is uh, bigger than the downstairs. This is an improper fraction. Am I, am I right, Claire? Thank you. This is an improper fraction. This fraction, yes, is improper because it represents a value that is greater than one. It's one and then some. Five fourths, we can simplify to one and one fourth. So the, both of these values represent the same amount, but they're just two different versions. This is the improper version. This is the mixed number version. So we multiplied six by five fourths, a value greater than one. And then we multiplied one fourth by five fourths, a value greater than one. Our result was a product that was greater than six. Our result down here is a product that is greater than one fourth. Very interesting. So this is what we're doing in lesson 22. We are multiplying, we are analyzing the products, and we're thinking about how that happens. So same, when we multiply a number by one, it stays the same, yeah, no duh. When we multiply in our second column a number by a fraction that's less than one, our product is smaller. It's kind of counterintuitive, but that's what happens in math land, especially when we're working with fractions and decimals. When we multiplied our whole number and our fraction by a sum that is, or I shouldn't say that, by a value that is greater than one, this improper fraction, for instance, our value was greater than. This, this uh, final column followed the rules that we uh, usually expect to see in multiplication. So we will work on this tomorrow. We're we're going to take a couple of looks at examples by our guest teachers, um, and so stay tuned. The learning target for lesson 22 is compare sizes of product to the size of factors. In English, it means uh, which is bigger, the product or the factors. So I guess we start. A company uses a sketch to plan an advertisement on the side of a building. Lettering on, I can't read that. 
Lettering on the sketch is three fourths of an inch tall. In the actual in the actual advertisement, letters must be thirty four times as tall. How tall Guys. will those letters be on the building? This means you do thir three fourths of an inch times thirty four because it says thirty four times as tall. That equals three times thirty four over four. Thirty four times three equals a hundred and two, which means this equals hundred and two over four, and that equals hundred and two divided by four. Which equals two times four equals eight. If you ten minus eight, you get two. It's two down. Four times five equals twenty. Which is the largest you can get. Two divided by four equals two fourths. So you put a two fourths over here. So that equals twenty five two fourths, which equals twenty five and a half. That's the answer. And I'm like, why is there a person on five? The answer is 25.5 or 25 and a half. Okay, so then we're going to move to problem 5. Uh, uh, so I need to plug this part in. Um... How do we turn off the pencil? Hold on, we have technical difficulties. Close. Okay, good. Uh, and so we still have technical difficulties. How do I zoom out again? Uh, that's how you zoom out. Wrong way. There you go. Let's scroll down. Let's scroll down. There you go. Number five. There you go. So you can just do it like that. Okay. Sorry if it's really hard to see. It's just really hard to use this. So, the question is, Johnny ha says multiplication always makes numbers bigger. Explain to Johnny why that isn't true. Give more. Oh gosh, this pen isn't on again. It says give more than one example to help him understand. So, oh, in this, it says that in this thing, it says that you compare numbers to fractions and so this is um okay. so you have to help him understand and here's our first example let's say four eighths times one, one. That would equal four times one over eight. Four times one over eight. That still equals four eight. This and this are the same numbers. So that's the first reason that he's wrong. The second, another reason is, let's say. Fifty hundredths times one would equal fifty times one, and then a hundred at the bottom. 
then that would equal 50 hundredths. Same number here and here. So that means he is not correct. Um, so multiplication does not always make it bigger. Thank mm -hmm. you.